everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it's time to leave no dye behind. There might be a tiny bit of yellow here in this leftover dye bath that started out with about six cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm right now adding uh, 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn that is dry <laughs> currently. I've not pre-soaked it. Um, this yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and granted there was water removed from those six cups, but I do need to add more liquid because there just is not very much in here. We will be adding more volume with our leftover dyes uh, today, and we have a variety of leftovers in various shades and depths of uh, green and brown. The pan is still warm, um, so I checked it before so we're pressing in the yarn. Stroll is a yarn base that is pretty absorbent, so therefore um, colors sort of bind to it fairly quickly, uh, which is useful and helpful, and why I didn't pre-soak it in advance. The little bits of leftover that I'm adding at first come from doing various projects and uh, rinsing dried powder off of my utensils, and so this is pretty pastel and I'm just randomly applying it. Oh, the it's still a little warm in there, but I am going to go ahead and turn the heat on just a little bit low. So that was the first color. The second color is a lot lot more brown. But there's still sort of a greenish hint to it and I'm just oof. I actually really, really like this uh, as it is, as sort of like a pastel sort of wash, but I do have more green I want to add. And all of this <laughs> that I'm doing right now might, might pale in comparison to that. So this may not end up making a huge difference, which is why I'm thinking Part of me wants to leave it like that, but part of me also wants to uh, go for this green and truly use it up. So we will see. Let's just add a little bit. It's probably going to drown out a lot of these other tones, but I think I'm going to add it in smallish kind of ways. I this is I'm totally making this up as I go along. Uh, and it likely will spread a fair amount, but I am focusing it on areas where I didn't add as much of the other colors. And I might move everything eventually. But yeah, I think that this is just a nice little starting spot to give some little bit more depth of this green. And then I think what I want to do, and on camera you maybe don't see those other colors as much anymore, which is fair, but I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes. We'll see how it's spread, and then I think I will add the rest of the color, but more dilute. Diluting the dye will allow me to add uh, more the volume over a wider area while spreading out the dye. So each time I pour, I'll be adding less dye total, which will give us different intensities from what we see uh, here in the pan right now. But the reason why we're gonna wait a little bit of time is just that there is still unbound color here in the pan. So I'll see you in 10 minutes. The screen has spread a lot and there's still a little bit Left, although I am moving things now because why not? Uh, it's sad that the browns are probably going to end up uh, being covered up a bit, but this should give us a beautiful tonal that is a little bit random with the placement of these colors. And so I just added the rest of that dye. 
and I am moving the yarn. There's acid in here, but this is without flipping the yarn or anything, giving a small amount of the green color all around, and by moving it, I can just help distribute it, and especially in some areas that may be paler, like around the zip tie, which is totally fine because we're going for a sort of random tonal. Uh, we can just let a little bit of color be added. Now there are still those little bit of brown. It's super, super subtle in here. Uh, and in a different world, maybe I would have planned it differently, but I think that this is just a fun, random green tonal uh, that we can create with leftover dyes. And sometimes with leftover dyes, I might want to stop in a place, but other times my goal is to actually use up <laughs> the rest of that dye, so that way I can no longer have the container stored somewhere. And so our goal today was to use up all these leftovers and to absorb it onto the yarn. So anyway, I'm going to turn up the heat. Still low, but a little more medium low. And we're going to go ahead and heat this for 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll turn off the heat and let things cool completely. But I'll check back in with you before we remove it here from the pan. The yarn is cool and is looking more teal on camera. It's absolutely very, very green in person. And there are some of those like dirty brown undertones that are very, very subtle. Now, I also happen to have a lot of leftover pink dye. I added a pre-soaked skein of Stroll fingering weight yarn to the same pan, and then just like with the green, started adding the pink dye onto the pan. Uh, I did this, and I even filmed a little bit of it spreading out because just adding it and waiting, it did move from where it had started. But after about 10 minutes, I then diluted the rest of the pink dye, moved the yarn around, and added it to create a very pretty pink tonal. All right, I have let this heat for a little while, and I'm not sure on camera because of the reflections if you can see these like orchid hues, but actually all of the color has absorbed. Maybe there's a tiny hint left, but I'm gonna turn off the heat, let the yarn cool for a while in here, then I'll remove it and we can go wash all the leave no dye behind yarn. Let's wash these tonals. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding because our dye baths are really clear, but with pink, you never really know. And actually, sometimes with green, I feel like, wait, what colors don't bleed? I don't know. <laughs> I'm adding some clear dip soap, uh, which is optional. You can use like a wool wash or something, but I like to be able to show in these videos through a lot of rinses that the water is in fact clear. Um, because that way when I do things that are more risky <laughs> uh, technique wise, we can see how well the colors are set and it sort of gives a way to compare different yarn bases and some things to one another. So anyway, I am going to rinse, finish rinsing out the soap, then I'll put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I love leaving no dye behind and just throwing things together and getting this soft tonal effect is absolutely a favorite of mine. Sure, on the green, there's a tiny hint of brown and I think over here there's a tiny hint of sort of a blue color. Mostly though, the green really dominated and this pink is just pink. Um, but while I do these leave no dye, die behind videos and throw everything at yarn. I do want to acknowledge the privilege that I have to have lots of skeins of yarn at my disposal. And this was definitely not always the case. When I started off dyeing yarn, I would take one skein and then stretch it for as many videos as possible. If you go look at the very oldest Chemnitz videos, I was dyeing three to five grams of yarn at a time in those videos to play with different techniques and to make the, the yarn last for as many of my experiments as possible as I played with different techniques. And so I just want to acknowledge that, yes, it is a lot of fun to create these one-of-a-kind colorways. And since I have an Etsy shop, this is something that I'm able to do and show this free-flowing, fun, 
we don't know where we're going to end up. But you can still have a lot of fun with leftovers, even with limited yarn at your disposal. You can save your dyes for uh, a period of time. I have some stock solutions that are over six months old that I've used in some videos. And so while I prefer to use stocks faster, you can hold on to it until you have a project you want to do. And the pink, you could mix it to create purples or other shades and use it like a primary. And the green, a same. You could wait and mix it to get the colors that you want and the hues that you want. So whether or not you have extra yarn that you can dye right now, there are still a lot of fun that you can do with leftover colors and you can use them in your projects going forward when you're ready to. And if you want to experiment with different techniques, you absolutely don't have to dye 100 grams at a time. I would take a skein, put it over the back of a chair, and wind these tiny minis that I, that I used in those early dyeing experiments. And so that is a really, really great way to play around and see what techniques you enjoy and get a sense of what you might want to explore moving forward. And so it's a way that you can make that skein of yarn stretch really, really far. One big reason why I started filming these videos for YouTube was to share my color journey, but also to share my experiments, my successes, and my failures, to make it easier for you to decide where you might want to start on your dyeing journey, and to get a sense of, okay, I really like this effect. Rebecca tried this technique. Can I, how can I tweak that to get the effect that I might want? Um, so I hope that you see these videos as, well, either some good entertainment for while you're knitting or crocheting, <laughs> or as a jumping off point. Uh, whether you want to try to recreate exactly what I've done or, make, or go further and modify it and build on it and improve my techniques. Uh, I love hearing your stories and seeing the yarn that you've dyed. So feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'm just at Chemnitz and I'd love to see what you're creating. And if you're finding this journey really, really helpful, please subscribe and turn on notifications by pressing that bell icon. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for joining me on my yarn dyeing journeys. I did briefly mention my shop earlier. If you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It's a great way to help support the content here and get some fun hand dyed yarn at the same time. And what makes my yarn really unique is that you can go and watch me dye it while you're knitting, crocheting, weaving, or whatever craft you enjoy to do with yarn. Uh, so it just adds like another step to that handmade journey that I think is really, really unique. In all of the listing descriptions, you can always find the video title and the date it was published. So then you can go and get a little more information about exactly what went into the creation of that yarn. You can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop down in the video description. I get so excited when I pour dye onto yarn and I watch how it spreads. Sometimes I can really predict exactly what will happen and sometimes it just still surprises and excites me and it is just so much fun to see how the dye moves through the liquid. I don't know. I find it really soothing and a lot of fun and so I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.